Hey guys, it's Maggie here with an older rehashed video for better quality voiceover. And it's a Christmas box, but it could be all year round if you change the paper. I made little birthday giveaway party favor thingies with Christmas chocolates in them. And the box is only one inch and one quarter square. And so as the tiniest Christmas box ever. And you don't need a really big piece of paper either, so you can use scraps. Or what I used are sheets of um, one of those blocks, they're A5 size and European size. And then a little bit of ribbon and <laughs> they're cute. They fit three of these little treats. But yeah, if you have something else that might fit, then go ahead. They're so cute. They fit both ways, um, upright or flat. So um, for it, you need a piece of paper. And this, these are the blocks that I'm using. And uh, well, you know any size paper that you have scraps you need a piece of paper that is five and a half by four and one eighth of an inch so i'm just choosing the ones like if you um use paper that doesn't have a pattern direction then you will make your life much easier <laughs> you can use any and so i'm cutting the paper and it should give you two out of them and uh, these are the cheap blocks they're not really square but <laughs> you score on the long side at one and a quarter two and a half three and three quarters and five inches and on the short side at one and a quarter two and a half and three and three quarters and um, the measurements and the pattern are on my blog so you can go and check it out and keep it can download the picture it's not real size anymore I, I do it in real size but you know when you upload it and you change it in Photoshop mm, so don't expect it to be like that so I'm, I'm notching and cutting all the little squares on each side and then you have to see which bits you have to cut off This is for the lid, by the way. And I'm using tape runner for the video purposes, but please use uh, your glue gun or a really strong adhesive. Because, it, well, my tape runner doesn't keep it shut. So. Let's see, that's the lid. And then the bottom. fold in the three flaps and then the one that's in the front as it lasts so you get a nice um, curve fold instead of uh, an open look at it I don't know how to say it but it really depends on how you close it and then you know you run it through your messy <laughs> ribbon container You don't have to either, by the way, if you don't want to. <laughs> so the, um, the um, paper that has a direction, like this with the words on it, has to be cut and folded in a special way. Otherwise you get your text upside down. You have to make sure the long side has, uh, if you hold it like this in the long side, your text has to be upright. And then you turn it 180 degrees, and then you score it like I said before one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five inches, and one and a quarter, two and a half, and three and three quarters. And again, you don't have to remember all this, it's on my blog. <laughs> it's really easy. follow the pattern I think it's like a, a floor plan <laughs> this is the little tab that will do it shut and then again you need to cut off little bits for the lid did you know I'm eyeballing them <laughs> 
I don't really care. It's so small. If it's a little bit off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you have to make like 30 of them. And then it's much less worrisome. See, then it, or make sure that you don't look into the fold or the open bit, but a nice closed edge. And you put your tweets in. Maybe a jawbreaker would fit as well. I'm not sure how big they are. I, I don't eat them. <laughs> but yeah, a bit more ribbon. Or twine, you know, you can use anything that you have. Embroidery thread or even a little piece of card. 